In louder, amen. Let's have a single blessing. It will be a major tragedy if you pray a gentleman's prayer here this morning. It will also be a major tragedy if you leave this place and some of the things we are going to mention now are still in place. Remember, this is Mountain of Fire and Miracles Ministry. A place dedicated and devoted to the revival of apostolic signs and wonders. There are people who are here this morning who cannot decipher or understand or master what they are going through. One of the major reasons is what we are going to discuss this morning. But talking about it really is not the key thing. The key thing is to dissolve the problem. I pray that as many people as are here this morning, and this is the message your destiny has been waiting for, whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, whether they like the sound of your voice or not, you shall be delivered by fire in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud. Overpowering the demons of your parents. Overpowering the demons of your parents. This is why I said this morning, <laughs> it's not the money to come here and joke. This topic has no respect for anybody. Whether you are a pastor, even that's why you can pray harder. Overpowering your parents' demons. Demons of your parents. Can demons be transferred from parents to children? The Bible says a resounding yes. Can adversity be transferred from parents to children? The Bible says capital yes. Can the storms of life that is about to swallow some parents be transferred to the children? Oh yes. The Bible said, oh yes, that can happen. And if you do not overcome those powers, they overcome you. But if you overcome them, your life takes a different turn. I see somebody here this morning. The first prayer you are going to pray now will throw the camp of your enemy into chaos. And you will possess your stolen possession. When the time comes to pray that prayer. One thing that bothers me sometimes when I read the Bible is that certain things are said. The people understand it. And, but me, I don't understand it. It seems clear to the people they are talking to that this is clear, but I can't. Why do, why, how do they understand this? Unless the Holy Spirit now sheds the light to you. Those ancient people who had gone, they seem to know certain things we do not know. They seem to understand certain factors which we ignore to our parents. They seem to know certain information that our present generation is still struggling to grasp. In the book of John chapter 9, the gospel according to St. John chapter 9, the disciples of Jesus, they said certain things. Jesus did not deny what they said. He just explained the situation as at that time. John chapter 9. Gospel according to St. John chapter 9. If you are there, say yes. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that was born blind? So the disciples understood that parents could be the source of the trouble of their children. So they asked Jesus, why was this boy born blind? Was it because of the sin of this man or his parents? Jesus answered, Neither are this man sin, nor his parents. But that the works of God should be made manifest in him, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is there. So, in this particular situation, Jesus said, No, 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 it's not the sin of the parents, it's not the sin of this man, it's another reason. Problems are universal entities. Problems do not show racial discrimination. Things like depression, suicide, alcoholism, loneliness is all over the world. Things like witchcraft attacks, backwardness, sickness, poverty is all over the world. Problems do not respect anybody. Whether you invite them or you don't invite them, they come anyway. 
And that's why, that's why we keep saying, everyone either has a problem, or is fighting a problem, or himself is a problem. But the mystery of problem is this. Behind every problem, there is a spiritual force. There is a spirit. Spirit. Something backing the problem up. And a lot of people are battling against spirits they think is bad luck. Whereas it's not. Problems can move from generation to generation. But when a man begins to battle the demons of his parents, and he didn't know that he had the battle to fight, it is a serious matter indeed. Your parentage will determine the battle you fight. Like I used to tell you here, if Israel did not go to Egypt, they would, have, they would not have cause to pass through the Red Sea. It was their parents who took them there. Now the children have to pass through the Red Sea. Listen and listen to me very well, beloved. There is a connection between your parentage and your future. Your parentage will determine the land of battle you fight. What happens to you in the womb may affect the totality of your life here on earth. When the demon of your parents are fighting you, I do not cut them off. If they stop you, know for sure they are coming to stop your own children. And this is why you have to stop them before they stop you. Abraham told Abimelech a lie that his wife was not his wife. The demon of lying. Forty years later, Isaac told Pharaoh a lie that his wife was not his wife. The demon of lying. Sixty years later, Jacob and his mother deceived Isaac. The demon of lying. Eighty years later, Laban deceived Jacob. The demon of lying. Hundred years later, Jacob himself was deceived by his own children. The demon of lying. All these are parental demons that affect people and can cause serious alarm and trouble. Parental demons are demons assigned to a family. They are transferred spirits. They are spirits that torment. They are spirits that cause these inherited blockages. They are spirits that go through the bloodline. They are defilement passed through the bloodline. They are demons behind people practicing the iniquity of their father's house. They are the spirits bringing misfortune into the bloodline. They are the ones supervising like father, like son spirit, like daughter, like mother spirit. They are the ones operating those negative patterns, negative patterns, negative patterns being handed down from generation to generation. They are the ones passing bondage from person to person. This is a very, very serious matter. And I want, I want us to take it very seriously. I know a family of six, four males, two females. Every male goes blind at the age of 25. That demon went from father to son. I know families where there is always divorce among females at certain ages. There is a demon that supervises those things. I know families where that any time they give birth to a male child, or female children, divorce is what follows. We know families where the females never get married. The males get married, they have stable home, but they live in abject poverty. I know families where anyone with a bright future dies prematurely. It's a demon power. That is, I say, demon assigned to kill anyone who wants to move forward. I know families where they are known for mysterious deaths. I know families where Practically all the people in the family have uncompleted bills, uncompleted bills. They just don't seem to complete anything. I know people who, who they think back now, your grandfather struggled and struggled and struggled through life. As far as your memory can carry you, your father also struggled and struggled and struggled through life. And now you are beginning to notice that you too are struggling, you are struggling like they are struggling. That is a struggling demon that is transpired. You can see a, a power that wants to stop you where they stop your father. You are fighting a familiar spirit that should not be ignored. The truth is this, beloved. The lion you refuse to kill will kill you. The issues you refuse to confront will confront you and may defeat you if you don't know what to do. That which wants to stop you where you they stop your father. If you can pray with fire and with power this morning, 
They have no option but to let you go. Raise up your right hand to the heavenlies and declare this with a violent voice. Parents that stop my parents. Is that the loudest you can shout it? And you are now trying to stop me. Can I hear you shouting this loud? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Something is happening already. It is important for you to pray. This first prayer here this month, tell I to stop my bed, and I'm not trying to stop me. Yeah! In Jesus' name we pray. The demon in some families that nobody lives long enough to become old. In some families, everyone is a polygamist. Everyone. There is a demon that doesn't make them get satisfied with one woman. It's a demon power. In some families, they practice incest. Demon of incest is there. In some families, there is a demon that will make the husband to be sleeping with the housemaid. In some families, the demon of hereditary diseases. In some families, a demon of insanity and poverty. If you are here this morning and you take a good look at your life, maybe you're a woman, take a good look at your life, and then you bring your mother before you. You take a good look at your mother, and you find that the stress she went through in marriage you are going through now. She was beaten up thoroughly by your father. Now you are being beaten up yourself. Look at it now. You studied the life of your mother. In fact, all her sicknesses, you are having it. All her defects, you are having it. She tells lies, you are telling lies. She does all kinds of terrible things, you are doing the same thing. Then you need prayer this morning. Perhaps as a man, you studied yourself to find that the defects and weaknesses of your father is manifesting in your life. Your father runs after anything that is wearing sketch, you are doing the same thing. Something is wrong somewhere. Your father was a wrestler and a struggler. And yes, you find yourself wrestling and struggling with life too. There is a demon of your father's house. A demon power there that you need to confront. And they are strong to confront. Because if you say, leave me alone. They will say, but you are a member of social family, aren't you? Say yes. We have been assigned to this family. It is your turn to suffer. It is you who will say no. Pass over. Pass over me. Not me. Not me. Others may, but I'm different. In some family, the demon trouble them is lack of favor. Or near success syndrome. Near success syndrome. Your father almost became a king, but he didn't become one. Your father almost became a millionaire, but he didn't become one. And you are seeing the outworking of those things. In some family, it's backwardness. Serious backwardness. In some families, is that they maltreat their wives. In some families, all the women marry bad, bad husbands. There is a demon that attracts bad husbands to the women. In some families, bad wives. There is a demon that attracts bad wives to the men there. In some families, all the men there must marry witches. There is a demon there that attracts witches to the men. In some families, there is a demon that kills husbands prematurely. In some families, the women there will start living with men without marriage. In some families, they have this rage of uncontrollable anger. They get so angry, all of them, they get angry very quickly. In some, some families, they have, they, have, they, they have this drinking alcoholism problem. There is a power assigned to sponsor all these evil things. Perhaps you are here today and you can see that you are under stress. You are under attack by this power. And you know those things that have happened before, they happen to you now. 
your father was an alcoholic, you are becoming an alcoholic too. Some people, no matter how they try not to be like their mommy or their daddy, they just behave like them. The negative aspects of their parents, they copy them. All these demons can only be controlled and dealt with by the power in the word of the Lord. On the other side, if you overcome these parental demons, ten things happen to your life. And this is where we are going to start praying now. If you fail to overcome them, they will stop you. We are not talking about... I'm not talking about psychology here now. I'm not talking about superstition here now. The Bible does not discuss superstitions. This is naked truth. Naked truth. If you overcome this parental demon, the first thing you begin to experience is that the Spirit of God will anoint you for great achievement once you free yourself from them. The Spirit of God will anoint you for great achievement. Two, if you overcome this parental demon, your helpers of destiny will begin to locate you. Because most times, it is this Spirit that wants to stop us, that keep our helpers away. Your helpers of destiny will just locate you. Three, when you overcome these powers, your destiny advertisers will hear your voice. They will hear your voice. These powers of parental demons can keep your destiny advertisers from even listening to you. Four. If you overcome these powers, your destiny promoters will begin to respond to you when you overcome them. Five. When you overcome these powers, the grace to accomplish much with little will come upon you. That small thing that you have, it will just blossom and become big in your hand if you overcome them. Six, when you overcome these demons of your parents, you will defeat your enemies no matter how many they are, no matter their numbers. They will be the ones who will be running away from you. They will be the ones who will be afraid whenever they see you coming once you overcome them. Seven, if you overcome these powers, you will definitely step into your next level. You step into the next level of your life. Eight. If you are able to defeat these powers, you will rule what formerly ruled you. Those things have been ruling you before. You will now take charge and begin to rule them. Now, if you overcome these powers, you will be able to rewrite your family history. Because if you don't overcome the thing, how can you rewrite the history of others? And last but not the least, if you overcome these powers, you will end frustration in your life and family. Those are the ten advantages of fighting this kind of battle. And we are here at that battlefront this morning. Listen, a problem can be a seed. A problem can be like an egg. Once the seed is planted and the egg is laid, the incubation period starts. Some people's trouble may not manifest until they are 50, 60, or even 70. Some may not even happen in 10 years, 20 years time. But the evil seed is there, being incubated, being incubated. But if you kill the seed, there will be no manifestation. If you break the egg, the egg will not hatch a serpent. But if you take no action, or you think, well, I think everything is going on well and there is no need to pray. And you just took it for granted. The person will become a casualty. What do we do? The first thing is to accept that there is a problem. There is a problem. You accept that it's a problem. The second thing is to carry out a self-assessment. Put your life on a personal scale. Know thyself. Define yourself. Assess your life. What, what progress have I made in the last ten years? Am I different from my father? Am I different from my mother? Is there any progress that I've made that has positively affected others? Carry out a self-assessment. 
And once you do that assessment, you'll be able to locate where your prayer arrows should go to. Three, is to believe that there is a solution. Because every problem has a solution. Believe that there is a solution. And four, repent from personal sin and ancestral sin. Those sins of your parents, repent from them. Perhaps you can locate lying, you can locate lying, adultery, your family line. You need to ask the Lord to forgive you and forgive your generation. And then, you now wage war against these demon powers that want to stop you where they stop your parents. It is true that we do not choose our battles. We do not choose our enemies. We do not choose our battles. We do not choose our struggles. But we can choose our weapon of retaliation. This is why I prophesy upon somebody hearing me here this morning that you shall experience a solution revival. In the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet now. Rise up on your feet now. All eyes closed. But you see, if you are here today and you are not born again, you have not just surrendered the life to Jesus. You may tell you so very quickly. If not, you can't pray these dangerous prayers. Right there where you are. Say, Pastor, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Just raise up your right hand where you are. And say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. For so say that short prayer with me. Merely we close. Just find a way to the altar here. Now, in a very serious situation. Ignorance is no excuse. Ignorance is a disaster. And there is nothing more terrifying than spiritual ignorance in action. And one of the most dangerous things in this world is sincere ignorance. That's sincerely ignorant. But the enemy does not want to know that you are sincere about your ignorance or not. The manner of prayers you want to pray this morning. Your voice must pray. Your spirit must pray. Your soul must pray. Your body must pray. Your mouth must pray. Because herein lies the problem of so many of us. And this is a very great tragedy. That a lot of people crawl from the cradle to the grave. The demon of their father pursued them from the cradle to the grave. Why do you want to suffer what your parents suffer? Why do you want to suffer what your mother suffered? Why do you want to carry the evil load that they carried? Why don't you send it back to where it's coming from? Because if you don't stop it at your end, you too will transfer it to others. It may not be an immediate thing. It may be something that will happen later in the future. This is why nobody should joke with any of these prayers. Even if you feel there is no problem, I recommend you pray hard. You can pray preventive prayer, curative prayer. One mystery of prayer is that prayers never die. You can store your prayer in a bank and withdraw from it as time goes on. With anger in your spirit and with a powerful and violent, merciless voice. Knowing fully well that what you are dealing with now may have been in the family for thousands and thousands of years. And they will want to resist action. And those things may like to resist action. You need to fight it hard. You need to fight it hard. I was praying with somebody here yesterday. And a demon voice spoke from the person. And said, uh -huh. So you this stubborn woman. You brought yourself to this general overseer again for prayer. In spite of the warning we have given to you. We shall deal with you. These are the kind of powers we want to pray against now. With a loud voice, you will shout this loud and clear. Every demon power that stopped my parents. My curse is different. Yeah! In the name of Jesus.
It is dangerous to keep quiet. Then we will pray. Very good. Very good. I'd like you to double your efforts. Very good. Look at what is happening now. Yes. Now with a louder voice. Every power that wants me to suffer what my parents suffered. Can I hear you shouting this loud? You are a liar! Die! In the name of Jesus! 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 Makatesa tena kaya mustanda Rima sopanda kentea Malika tenda rabo kostopola kaya mustanda rabo The power of God in the name of Jesus. Move, 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 Then we pray. Aha. Aha. Enough is enough. The rope tied to that person's way from the grave to make you a failure. The fire of God is coming upon the rope. Aha. Yes, enough is enough. Something has happened to one sister over there. I command that spirit of your dead mother inside you to come out now. In the name of Jesus. Aha, aha. Say every battle transferred to me by my parents. Shall your voice be loud? Let your voice be louder than that. Die! In the name of Jesus. Let us share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and forevermore. Yeah. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord.